So how long does it take a pond to mature? Can you speed up the process? And can you do anything about annoying algae? G'day, my name is Kev. The aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain ponds without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, you might like to subscribe and check out my website, ozponds.com. So those of you that watch the channel know that a while back I built a new pond and it's currently still in its funky stage. It's growing string algae, the clarity can fluctuate day to day, and the pond is already three months old. How long will this go on? Well, the truth is it can take quite a while for a new pond to find its balance. Some might never experience any issues, and others may take up to 18 months to find their balance. So today I just wanna share some tips and tricks to help the pond along and also some things that you can avoid. So the first tips about algae, and this is generally what drives people crazy the most. As you can see, I've got quite a bit growing up here in the bog filter. The algae is growing because there's food available. Now I did expect this algae because I never rinsed down the rock and the pebble, and I used a flocculant to settle out the clay in the water. Well, all that nutrient is still in the water, even though the water's clear, and it's feeding the algae. So obviously if you can avoid starting the pond with a whole heap of nutrients inside it, that's going to help with the algae. But even if you rinse everything off, it's still a good chance that the algae is coming. Because as soon as anything falls into the pond, it starts breaking down and releasing nutrients. In fact, even in an established pond, you'll often notice the most algae growing around things that have fallen in the water. I'm no scientist, but here's my limited understanding. The bacteria and microorganisms are breaking down the organic material into nutrients, and the algae is simply opportunistic and grows to consume those nutrients. It's important to remember algae is incredibly important to the ecosystem, and we never want to fully eliminate it. It's a very important food source for small invertebrates, which are a food source for baby fish. So in my new pond with the algae, I'm not feeding the fish. These are small goldfish and they'll graze on the algae. But even if they weren't goldfish or algae eaters, I know that if the algae is present, there's going to be lots of other organisms that are feeding on the algae. And those organisms will get preyed upon by the fish. The way I look at it, is that the algae is simply pushing nutrients up the food chain. These small goldfish were destined to be feeder fish for someone's turtle or other predatory fish. And hey, they might still become a meal if my pesky cormorant or heron comes back. But they were very small when I got them and they're growing well without the need of any additional food. Plus when we add food, we're effectively adding nutrient to the pond. <laughs> okay, so I might've got a little sidetracked there. So what can we do to speed up the maturing process? The first is adding in different strains of bacteria. For the most part, the bacteria will find and colonize the pond all on their own. But if we want to speed up the process, it doesn't hurt to give them a helping hand. There's a lot of brands of pond bacteria, and I think they are all pretty much of a muchness. So just choose whatever fits the budget. If you want to see my favorite, I'll put a link to that in the description. And a second product that I've found helpful is diatomics. It encourages the growth of diatomes, which are a very beneficial type of algae. I'll also put a link to that in the description. And if you use the code OzPonds, you'll get free shipping. If you can't source diatomics in your country, another good one's New Algae. It does the same thing. And I should note that both the growth of bacteria and diatomes are best once the water's over 10 degrees Celsius, and both will multiply and thrive faster in well oxygenated water. So that's certainly something to keep in mind. So adding bacteria, encouraging diatomes, and having plenty of oxygen all help, but the most important thing is patience. It takes time for the bacteria, the diatomes, and the microorganisms to find that perfect harmony. Because every pond is different with different nutrient loads, amounts of fish, filtration, and inputs from the surrounding environment, 
It's practically impossible to determine exactly how long an individual pond will take to find balance. So if you've done everything right, you've got good filtration, plenty of oxygen, sensible amounts of fish, you aren't overfeeding, and there's no runoff or excessive nutrients entering the pond, you just need to trust the process. And if it makes you feel better, you can scoop out some of the excess algae. I do it too, because I don't like the look of the algae. And anyway, it's just helping remove that excess nutrient quicker. Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful. Most new ponds will go funky, so don't panic. Thanks for watching. See ya.